Hello healers and health seekers. It's me, Ichoda, healing with medical medium information for 32 months now. If you want to know what I'm healing from, you can check the description box below. There are links that will take you to the stories. Today I'm here to make a video about moving while healing and here and my top tips for moving while healing. The reason I feel like I'm a little bit qualified to make this video <laughs> is we have moved several times in the past couple of decades and we have moving down to a system and I feel like we've gotten pretty good at packing up and moving. So I wanted to share what I've learned, especially what I've learned about packing and moving while healing because as we know, moving is a stressful, stressful time and we don't want to run our adrenaline. We don't want to get our adrenals running. We don't, we want to mitigate as much as we can the effects of the stress of moving on our bodies because we are still healing. We need to make sure that self-care, even amidst all of the chaos of moving, that self-care still is the priority and that your healing still is the priority. Like that is the most important thing even when you're going through this big situation, this big stressful situation. So I have some things that I do to help that process go more easily and I am gonna share my top tips with you now. Plan your schedule ahead of time, your moving schedule. My husband and I made a list of all of the things that we knew we needed to do for the move and for us because we're gonna be taking a little time in the middle uh, before we move, we're going to go visit family for three weeks and then we're going to go on to Colorado and be staying in Colorado while we look for an apartment. And we will be in the RV that whole time because we have our RV still, so we're going to use it as part of our move. Also, before we go into the RV, we're going to put things in storage. So we needed to make sure that we have a schedule where we're like, okay, what's the date we want to rent the storage unit? What's the date, you know, my husband wanted to give notice to his work to let them know what's going on. For us, some of our stuff is going with us in the RV, like my entire kitchen and the mattress on one of the beds and the animals and <laughs> things like that are going to come with us in the RV, our bedding and just sort of everyday items that we're going to want to have for the time we're going to be in the RV in between the move. Clothing, things like that. So there's all of these considerations. So we planned out our timeline like we're going to pack on these weekends and we're going to be moving things into the storage unit on these weekends and we'll be bringing the RV in at this time and we'll be focusing on putting everything in the RV. So we want to make sure that everything is in the storage units that's going in the storage units before the RV is here and we start putting things in the RV. The weekends we do the storage units, we need to be renting the U-Haul trucks and stuff like that. And then for us, there's also reserving RV parks and campgrounds along the way so that we have everything booked for where we're staying. This probably doesn't apply to most people, <laughs> but it does to us. So just having a schedule laid out of like what you need to do by when is is very important so that it gives you a timeline so you don't have any feeling like rushing or feelings of urgency or like oh my gosh all of a sudden i just realized we have to do all this then of course there's things like turning off utilities forwarding your mail things like that so you just want to make sure that you have dates for all of these events we want to have the utilities turned off by the end of the month and we have our mail forwarded to where we're having it forwarded to. Plan out your packing. Know what you want to pack in what kind of container. For me, when we pack, we use a couple of different kind of containers. We use those big plastic bins. Just to give an example, I bought these purple bins here to store my son's plush collection. And the reason I bought bins is because it'll keep moisture out and I only really bought the bins for his plush collection because he is probably going to store them long term. They might stay in, a, in the bins once we've moved and so I want to make sure that we can keep them dry and clean, mold free, stuff like that. So these bins are a really good way to do that. It'll be just really easy to know where to put them and they're in a container that can store them for a long time if need be. 
And in the end, if we don't need those storage containers, I can always sell them on Craigslist or something like that. Where to source your packaging materials and what kind of materials to get. Particular bins and the name of them, it is the Sterilite 20 gallon bin, 80 quart, 76 liter. These are the dimensions and we got them at Target. They also have them, I mean anywhere they sell bins like this, Menards and Walmart and all those places, they're all going to have stuff like this. And I like purple <laughs> and my son didn't care. So I chose purple and I just I got these because it's consistent. We use cardboard boxes, of course. The moving boxes, I got they're mostly the same size. And yeah, I see you baby. So the moving boxes are mostly the same size and you can see that they're numbered. The moving boxes this time we got on Amazon because of my sensitivity. I do have a sensitivity to cardboard and I have a sensitivity to mold, etc. So we can't... What do you want? The door open? So we can't... <laughs> there you go. See, it's all moving boxes. So the reason we bought new boxes, which we don't usually do, we usually get them on Craigslist, is because of my sensitivities. Because I've had reactions and stuff, and so we kind of want to minimize that. As you can see, for soft things, like clothing and fabric, I have a lot of fabric. We bought these IKEA bags, which are quite useful, actually. I really like them. They have a big, long zipper on top that actually goes all the way around one side, and the other side it doesn't. They're lightweight and obviously when we're done using them we can fold them up but we can still use them in the future for something else and they'll fold away in storage. So I love that because my fabric doesn't need to be protected in a box. It's fabric. It's fine. It's not going to hurt it. And so I got a few of these. The, they come in three packs. I got them on Amazon. There's another one over here. I think it has like all my t-shirts in it of varying sizes <laughs> over the years. So that's the great thing is they fold up nicely and they can be used for soft things that you don't mind. It doesn't necessarily need protection. I like to minimize my exposure to cardboard if I can because for me cardboard is kind of a, a little bit of an issue for me. If I touch it too much my skin gets really dry. It affects the way I feel and I think that I sort of react to some of the chemicals on the cardboard. It's so much better now than it used to be. Like I used to would not be able to touch it at all. So that made packing really difficult because I couldn't touch the paper to wrap anything in and I couldn't touch the cardboard. And we have found ways around that. <laughs> now, sourcing your materials. Back in the day, <laughs> I would always, always, I'm all about reduce, reuse, recycle, cardboard boxes. Oh my gosh, you can reuse those so many times, right? So I'd always get, whenever we moved, I'd always get cardboard boxes off Craigslist, or I would go to businesses. You could go to food places like sandwich shops or grocery stores or stuff like that and ask for their extra cardboard boxes and you could get their cardboard boxes. So there were plenty of places where I could get cardboard boxes if I needed them for free. So the last time we moved, when we moved here, and we had our stuff in storage while we were in the RV, we had packed everything in cardboard boxes that we had stored in the garage and ones we had gotten from grocery stores or I don't know, Target or like any place we could find cardboard boxes, sandwich shops, whatever. I don't know if it was having stored them in the garage or the storage unit where we kept the cardboard boxes, but they soaked up an odor that was kind of a mold mildew smell and I hardcore reacted to all of those boxes. Like when we moved them into this apartment, we had to literally just as quickly as we can just take everything out of the boxes and get rid of the boxes because I was having such a powerful reaction to them. And that w my husband this time said, we are not doing that again. <laughs> and he bought boxes off of Amazon. And I understand his point. I mean, it's my sensitivities he's worried about, which is really sweet. Like he's thinking about me and thinking about 
but also the amount of work he had to do getting those boxes out of, <laughs> out of the house. So that's what we did for materials. Okay, and other materials that we use for packing, buy a bunch of packing tape at Costco, and a Sharpie to write the numbers on the sides of the boxes. I write numbers on every side of the box that will be potentially visible so that it's easy to find them. Also for packing materials. So remember I said like I have a hard time with paper so wrapping up fragile things in paper doesn't work for me. My husband doesn't have that problem so he will use paper in his packing when he's packing like his own personal stuff. But when we're packing things for the house as much as possible, I like to wrap things in fabric. I have a bunch of fabric and because I sew, so fabric is a great thing to wrap delicate things in. And alternately, sometimes plastic, like bubble wrap and stuff. All year long we save bubble wrap and packaging materials. We did that this year because we knew we were going to move, so we saved all the packing materials whenever we'd order anything, so we had a lot of really good plastic to use. And so yeah, we've, we've used the bubble wrap, and that is very helpful. You don't want to densely pack a box full of breakable materials. You want to wrap it in as much cushioning as possible when you're packing it so that there's very little chance of breakage. Maybe have fewer things in that box because there's so much packaging material, but at least you know that everything's cushioned really well and it won't break. So I really like fabric for artwork because it cushions it really well. And a lot of times it's hard to find bubble wrap in those big sizes too, so it's a win-win either way. Not just fabric, but bedding. If it's bedding that you're not gonna need out and in use while you're moving, like extra stuff that you would keep in the linen closet, tablecloths and sheets and, and things like that, I would I pack artwork and bedding too. That's another good thing to use. When we moved in here, we actually bought a bunch of IKEA furniture because when you move around a lot and you travel, and plus we had downsized from our old house. So we bought a bunch of IKEA furniture and now we are disassembling it for travel and we have bought a big roll of this plastic that you can wrap packages and boxes in and whatever and we wrapped it around the shelves and then taped the ends so those are the disassembled billy bookcases and we will be disassembling the expedites and I don't remember the name of the metal shelves, but so see, we've got them all. That's what we did today is we wrapped these in addition to packing some boxes. Sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's green. You can get it at any like Home Depot or Lowe's or U-Haul store, any of those places. You can get these, it's like this big, huge roll of plastic. So that has been an invaluable addition to our packing. Keep an inventory. I learned this trick when we moved to Canada and we were required to keep an inventory of items because we have to show them when you're moving into Canada, you had to, we had to show them an itemized list of everything we were bringing in and its approximate value. So we painstakingly made this itemized list of everything we were bringing into Canada and its value and it was like six pages long and they barely looked at it. However, you have to have that list because I guarantee you if you don't have it, that's going to be the time they're like, let's search the truck and then they'll like pull everything out of the moving truck and it'll be your job to put it back in. They can do that. They do stuff like that at the border. They didn't. They were super nice and we got right through. It was no problem, but that list was handy to have. And the great thing about having a list of inventory, so I number every single box and bin that we go through. I just take a sharpie and some painter's tape and I draw my numbers, rip off the tape, stick it on the bin, and I put it on every side because I don't know what side people are going to look at the bin from. So I put it on all the sides so that we can easily find the number. For example, these two bins, see they are tagged on all sides, 18 and 19. 
They have been inventoried. They have been put into a circle. I've got photos of the insides of them. If I wanted to value them for insurance purposes, I could do that as well. And yeah, it's a it's a slow process and it takes time, but it doesn't run my adrenals and I like it because I just I know where everything is and I'm not hurrying either. I'm not hurrying and I love that. Oh, another thing I really like about these bins is they have the snap lids. So it's really easy to open them, which obviously in the long run isn't going to keep out mold. But something you can do for containers of plush or clothing or anything like that is I actually save the silica packets from my supplements. And when I have a bin of plush or clothing or something that I don't want to get moldy and I want to stay dry, I will take some of these for a big bin. I might take a few and I will put them in the bin. That is a great use for these silica packets is just they keep things dry. They pull moisture out of the air. And on my son's shelves, like I have bins like this and I just stick them in the bin. And they're really quite useful, I think, anyway. I, we haven't had any problems with molding with our plush yet, and my son is a great protector of his collection. So, save those silica packets. I like to find uses for things, like, I don't like to put things in landfills if I can avoid it, so this is the use I have found for silica packets. You can put them in clothing drawers, too, if you live somewhere moldy. I don't think that's going to be an issue in Colorado where it's super dry, but hey, you never know. And for the boxes, I'll just write in Sharpie on the box. And then I have in my phone, I use Evernote to keep the text list of inventory, and there's an app called Encircle, E-N-C-I-R-C-L-E. That app actually lets you keep an inventory by room, and then you can put whatever information you want, like serial numbers, model numbers, value, everything. You can put all kinds of stuff in that app. And it lets you take photos. So I take the photos and then have like sort of a the brief list of what's on the box. And then I have like just the list of everything by number on in Evernote. Having that list lets me, when we are unloading the truck on the other end and putting it in our new space, then I, I'll say, oh, this box goes in our son's room, and this box goes in the kitchen, and this box goes in the living room, and this box goes in here. Because I know by the box number, like, what's in everything. I find that to be very handy. The other part of that is when you're unpacking, then you have the box number, and you, you're like, oh, where did I pack this? You know. You can just look at your list and go, oh, that's in box number 75 or something. And I love that. I love having that list and that inventory. So that is one thing that the requirement for Canada gave to us that we just took with us into every move after that because it's been very handy to have an inventory. Now we don't necessarily itemize every single thing in the box, but we'll give like a general idea. Generally, this is what's in this box. <laughs> books. <laughs> Children's books. <laughs> Stuff like that. So I just, I find that to be incredibly helpful. Hopefully you will too. As you can see, everything is numbered and labeled. So I will take pictures often of what's in the bins or a picture of the bins themselves or in the boxes. And I'll have it on in circle, but then in Evernote, I will write down the contents of the box. Pack slow. What I mean by this is don't wait until the last couple of weekends before you have to move or even the last month before you have to move to start packing. I like to pack things in what I call in layers. I like everything in layers. <laughs> Healing is in layers, everything's in layers. But pack in layers. So the things that you really know you don't need to use, like the artwork on the wall. So for me, the way I pack, maybe I'll do like six to eight boxes in a weekend, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And it just all depends on my energy levels and what I can get done. And I do pack very slowly. I take a lot of time to think about what I want to put in a box and how I want to group certain things together. And I also do an inventory. So my slow packing helps me to do that whole process. And also as I pack, a lot of times, you know, packing always unearths a bunch of dust. I have sensitivities to dust as well as the cardboard. So 
Part of my reason for packing slow is so I'm not touching too much cardboard in a weekend. Another reason is so I can take a lot of breaks because I need to take breaks for sustenance and things like that and support my adrenals. That's really important. So I find that just taking my time with packing and just enjoying the process and not trying to rush myself through anything. I just really, and it also conserves energy because I don't have an unlimited amount of energy yet. I need to be careful with how quickly I do something. So I do just take my time with it. To have a dusting cloth with you as you pack. And the reason is, is because inevitably packing, no matter how clean of a people you are, kicks up a lot of dust. There's always a bunch of dust around and so, you know, you're clearing stuff off a shelf that you haven't really used a lot and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this is really dusty. So just keeping a dusting cloth or something to dust with nearby so that you can just kind of wipe that stuff as you go. A, it helps you not kick up too much dust. I think for anybody that's kind of a sensitivity, having, you know, breathing dust in and stuff like that is not, not really good for anyone. So yeah, you want to make sure that you have a dusting cloth. <laughs> then you can dust as you go. And I have, I just use kind of a, sometimes I'll use a wet washcloth because then I can, I dust as I go and then I can also rinse it and reuse it. So that's been very helpful for me. Take sustenance breaks. All right. One of the most important parts of packing is knowing when you need to take a break and take care of your adrenals because you are still healing. So it doesn't really matter how much of a roll you get on. You got to take care of your body and feed yourself. So I made myself some spinach soup with cucumber noodles and I've got some asparagus, apple, cucumber juice, delicioso, to make sure I get all that good hydration in. And the other thing is, is I was noticing that the dust was starting to get to me a bit when I was packing my son's room. And so I was like, okay, I need to get out of this room right now and go do something different that's like not packing and doesn't involve kicking up dust. And I was like, well, perfect timing because it's time for my lunch. So... Don't forget to support your body when you're packing. It is the most important thing. More important than getting things packed is getting your healing foods into your body and supporting the process so that you don't burn out and you don't get too tired and you can keep going. So, I'm going to have my lunch now. You have to support your adrenals when you're packing, especially given you're going to be exposing yourself to chemicals from the cardboard and dust in the air and whatever else you uncover as you're packing. I don't know. It's just important to support your adrenals. It's so important to keep that glucose and mineral salt balance happening in your body so that you can do the best for yourself. Because remember, our health and healing is our top priority and the packing will get done. And when you do the packing in stages, it allows you that time to support your adrenals. Play music or listen to podcasts or I like to listen to medical medium radio shows or audiobooks while I'm packing or listen to some music. The advice is listen to something that you enjoy. It helps the packing go faster and doesn't seem like it takes as long and keeps you company while you're packing. Stay hydrated, of course. Of course you want to stay hydrated. This should go without saying, but I do feel like it's important to say nonetheless. So keep your lemon water, your honey lemon ginger water, whatever you drink throughout the day, your water, anything, keep that near you when you're packing. Kind of move it around with you so that you always have it nearby. You can reach out and get a drink because you don't want to forget to drink when you're packing. You've got to stay hydrated. That's crucially important. While you're packing, make piles. You want to make a pile that you have, or a box, or a bin, or a bag, or something that's a donate. Like, this is stuff I don't need. That's the one. Here's what I love about moving frequently and packing because we have to go through everything we own and look at it. And then I can say, Do I really use this? Do I need this anymore? 
And I love it when I can say, I do not, and get rid of it. I love being able to get rid of stuff. It's like a purge and a declutter. That's what packing is. is it is an opportunity to get rid of things you do not need that are just taking up space in your space. And then you can choose whether you feel like you have the energy to list it for sale somewhere, Craigslist or Facebook or whatever. Or you can donate it to your local hospice thrift store or whatever other charity. There's so many, there's other charities for thrift stores, but our favorites always tend to be the hospice thrift stores. They tend to be staffed by volunteers and they tend to be higher end. The people really care and they really take care of things. I just, I like that because they're not going to put a bunch of broken stuff out like I've seen some places do and they're not a money grubbing fake for-profit organization like the other ones. So I like the smaller hospice charity thrift stores are my they're my favorite because all the proceeds really do go to hospice care and that's an important service for people obviously you'll have a pile for throwing away too I don't really need to tell you that but if it's something that somebody else can really use donate it so just to recap I, I feel it's very important to really start packing ahead of time when you're gonna move so you really give yourself time to do all the packing and stages and to take your time and to get what you need. The great thing is like for example with packing my son's plush we got like four or five of these matching purple bins to start with so I was able to pack sort of preliminary pack a bunch of the plush and he wanted to keep some out because you know we're still gonna be here at that time for another two months but then I realized on down the line I'm like oh I'm gonna need more of these bins so we were because we had time we have time we'll we're able to go out and get more of the bins as we need them and we don't it's not nobody's ever rushing it's never rushing and that's the important thing so I'm not running my adrenals I'm not like freaking out and going oh my god we need more bins we don't have them and whatever it's like I just I have time to get this stuff all done that doesn't mean at the end of it there's not going to be something <laughs> There's always that one box that you pack at the end that you're just like, this doesn't have a category, miscellaneous, but it's still stuff you'll use and that you need. So you're like, okay, just throw it in a box. Yeah, there's going to be that box at the end. But for the most part, all the other stuff is going to be pretty organized, I know. And that's what's important. And then we're traveling in our RV. So we will be just taking our entire kitchen with us. So talking about like while you're traveling and moving, and maybe on moving day, on moving day, make sure you have plenty of easy to grab fruit and greens so that you can keep those adrenal snacks going and make sure you have plenty of coconut water and lemon water and whatever you need for hydration so that you can keep hydrated all day. So we're moving, <laughs> we're moving all of our possessions out of this apartment in stages. We decided to book our storage unit two weeks in advance of when we would actually be technically required to be moved out of here. So basically we have two weekends preceding our move out date where we're going to rent the U-Haul truck and put a bunch of stuff in the storage unit for those two weekends. So that basically we'll do most of it the first weekend and then it's sort of like if there's extra stuff on the second weekend. But like I said, a big chunk of our stuff is actually gonna go in the RV with us. The kitchen, the bed, some possessions that we'll need while we're traveling, our computers, stuff like that. Things that we'll, we'll need for two months in the RV potentially. Normally, if you were gonna put your stuff in storage, you would just put it all in storage. But I would still say, try to stagger it. Like to us, it's worth renting the moving truck twice so that we don't have to overexert because it's the important thing is is to just to be able to feel like we have time to get everything done so that we're not adding to our stress by feeling like we have to rush it's very important to us to do it that way also the beauty of gradually taking everything apart and packing over two months is it really lets you see what kind of containers and storage you're going to need to put things in so you're not trying to figure out how am I going to pack this extra long rolled up maps and how am I going to pack this odd sized large artwork. Muffins is really, she's going to town on the snoring there. <laughs> so you, you really have like all the kind of 
containers you need because it gives you time to source those odd shaped boxes and stuff like that. Stuff that isn't just going to fit into your standard moving box. And maybe you need longer than two months. You know, it depends on your energy levels. I'll be honest, like when I was at the height of my chronic illness, it took us two years <laughs> to move out of our house. And I think we were packing for like a year of that. So we really did it in stages and very slowly because I had no energy and my husband was working full time and, you know, he could only do so much. And my friend would come down once a month and they would stay with us for a long weekend and there, our kids would play together and my friend would help us do big like bolus packing <laughs> where we did a like a big infusion of just getting a bunch of stuff packed because she had the energy to do it and she was incredible help for us but it like your energy levels it's dependent on your energy levels so if you need three months give yourself three months or four months like whatever you need two months is adequate for us be, given my energy levels right now and I don't have to rush and we can get everything done in stages and I like it that way. Only getting eight boxes packed in a weekend is not and that's just what I get packed in a weekend like my husband does his own packing and because he's packing up his stuff and he might get more or less done but he also is the guy who has to like take apart the furniture and do cleaning around us when we are kicking up a bunch of dust like I'll have him vacuum in the room and then he runs errands like he'll go out and if I need extra bins and he'll be the one who gets the bins and stuff like that so he's doing plenty plenty of work <laughs> and hopefully hopefully that gives us really just the ability to for at least this part of it to be not so stressful I mean of course I'm still thinking about logistics on the other end and that stresses me out a little bit but at least on this end, things are fairly well handled and there is actually the physical moving of things, which is going to be a whole other thing, but that's, you know, my husband and his friends are going to handle that. So that's not really the part I have to worry about other than making the reservations and the canceling of things calling up the utility companies or the great thing is now you can do so much online. So you can just forward your mail online. You can cancel your utilities online all of the details. I can reserve the U-Haul truck online. So that's really nice. So those are my tips and tricks for moving while healing and maintaining your self-care and maintaining your healing and keeping your adrenals low while still doing what needs to be done and taking care of all the details. I hope that it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up below. You can subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button there and dinging the bell next to it if you want to be notified when I post new videos. I love you, my healers and health seekers. Blessings on your continued healing journey. Remember to always stay curious and I will see you next time.